What's up, everybody? Thrall's of Metal here. I'm Jamin' John. I am Rin Necrotic Neck. And we are bringing you yet another album review. Surprise, surprise. Holy This time we are going over the newest album from Vitriol, Suffer and Become. This also comes out on the 26th of January on Century Media Records. This band formed in 2013 in Portland, Oregon. This is their second album overall, and uh, we actually went over their first one, To Bathe from the Throat of Cowardice. That is still quite an album title. I love that album so much. Now, this is their first one with new drummer Matt Killiner. Uh, he is of the band Gorgasm, which, I mean, if you're a Brutal Death Metal fan, there's probably a good chance you know who they are. And as far as a second guitarist on here, uh, Pretty much I was going by the archives. Uh, they have Stephen Ellis is listed on the album, kind of, as like a guitarist on there. But also when it comes down to the people playing there, it's just as a three-piece. It's a little confusing, but they also have ex-atheist guitarist Daniel Martinez in the band now, too. And I don't know, the, the whole lineup shit is a little confusing. Either way, uh, this band is just insanely brutal. Like, one of the most intense bands, yep. I think, uh... <laughs> <laughs> we've listened to on this channel over the years, and that is definitely saying something. Yeah, I mean, we've seen these guys a couple times, so I mean, I know already what I'm getting into, but this is particularly unhinged, mm -hmm. like a complete wall mm -hmm. of crazy dissonant sound and like faster than fast. It's fast isn't fast enough. Starts off with the first song, Shame, and it's Afterbirth. And it starts off with this creepy, warbled melody. It It's the main reason I don't buy cassette tapes anymore. Because when they start to go bad and get a little warped, it just sounds like... It's like a music box from hell. Exactly. A jack-in-the-box, but... Uh, dinky, 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 Satan! <laughs> <laughs> it's either Satan or a claymore that pops out and blows up in your face. Dinky, 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 bam! I guess part of the neat thing with that song, too, is that creepy warbled melody never leaves. It remains in the background the entire time of the song. Well, it even kind of pops back up on the forefront in that song. Like, uh, as it builds up, like, you hear this sort of muted tremolo riff behind it, and the riff itself is weird. And that is something we'll definitely get into, like, because the note choices and just the structure of these songs are <laughs> abrasive yeah. and uh, strange. Yeah. Like, the, the chord progressions are just odd. And when the song finally detonates like a claymore in your face, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's almost kind of hard to describe. Like, it is just instant musical violence. Like, and don't get me wrong, the musicianship here is extremely talented. It's not easy to do what no. they're doing. No, no, not at all. And not at that speed no. either. And once again, I mean, we've seen these guys, and I, I know what they're capable of, but, like, this just seems a little bit more, it's just full assault in your face at all times. Yeah, there really is not much of a break on here no. in terms mm -hmm. of, like, just the uh, battering no. that you take. Like, th this is just, like, a sonic beating like this feels like it was written as like catharsis for like life altering trauma yeah like you survived a fire and you were it out of the entire <laughs> orphanage right, right. uh yeah it is it's so dark it's so hostile it's unsettling there is not a single nice emotion that comes out of here like that not a moment of like introspective beauty yeah, or anything like it, that it, it is hellish is that a flower no. It's the bones of my dead mother, thanks for asking. But that's not to say that this album isn't without groove, or I guess groovy pockets, so to speak. Because although it is going at the speed of light and or sound, there is still groove, and when they get heavy, they get violently heavy. Again, Shame and its Afterbirth had that. The Flowers of Sadism had a really sick groove in it. The Isolating Lie of Learning from Another had a particularly sick groove in it. The, the it, intro was real nasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A big, lurching, gross mm. riff on there. And I, I gotta say, like, the, the production here is... It's, it's interesting. Now, this was mixed and mastered by Dave Otero, who has quite the resume. Yeah. But, like, sonically, this this album, and this band in general, is just different. Like, the guitar tone is almost kind of hard to describe. Yeah, I, I really don't know how to describe it, except maybe to turn the gain all the way up, or, like, 
something on a pedal board somewhere is just cranked That's to the all, nines. All, and right. like when it chugs, it sounds rich and full and, and beefy. But like, I don't know. I don't know what that noise is. A hamster in a blender. Either that or they're just, you know, uh, deciding to ditch picks and start playing with belt sanders. Mm. Or they had like a rabid Rottweiler come in and just play with the mixing board. I, I don't know. Like, sonically, this album just feels hateful and violent, but also like unsettling. And a lot of it has to do with like just the frequent use of dissonance and like atonal riffs. And the fact that the drum performance in here is just nuts, too. Oh, my God. You, sir. Oh, my God. That's crazy. It, that's fucking crazy. Ditch your piccolo snare, but that's crazy. <laughs> slow it down, fella. You're going to have carpal tunnel. Yeah. There's frequent blasts in here. Like, this is mostly blasts with, you know, like, pockets of intermittent groove. Little pockets, like the jean pocket where you put your... Little change in yeah, or you know whatever you're hiding from the cops. Yeah, like I mean, I, I get it. I have arthritis in my hands. It's half the reason I don't play drums anymore. But you're gonna get all over arthritis if you don't slow down mm -hmm. just a smidge. Mm -hmm. The song "Weaponized Lost" to me was like getting hit in the face with a chair at full force at the speed of the click track. Just every time, like that's every time it hit. There was a certain note that hit at the beginning of the riff, and every time it hit, it reminded me of just the thwack of getting hit in the face with a chair. Not that I've ever been hit in the face with a chair, but I have watched ECW wrestling. That's still young. The song Locked in Thine Frothing Wisdom literally made my blood froth like a hemoglobin frappe. You remember 123 Jello? The top layer, I guess that's one. That's, that's your blood, like that meringue, springy, spongy b blood. That's the blood froth. Yeah, now that song, the crazy dissonant tremolo riffs, and again, like the note choices, and there's always like a constant din of mm, noise. Yeah, something is happening. We weren't sure for a little while, and then the synth started popping up at least a little bit more clearly when it came down to the instrumental survival's careening inertia. Which again, was pretty cool. Yeah, it was. I did like that song. Props yeah. on the song titles. That song in particular, like, it has one of the few isolated, more quiet moments. Clean where it opens tone. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Clean tone. It's actually a kind of a pretty melody. Like there's, again, like some weird note choices. Like it sounds very pleasant. And then you hit some like lower minor chords. And like, ooh, that's kind of creepy. It's kind of like a dancing dead ballerina. Yeah. A little bit. She's the one spin around the music box from hell, right? Yes. The head ding, falls ding, off. Ding, ding, the devil. But that song is interesting in the sense like how it builds like you kind of feel like you're getting lured into like you know your standard midpoint interlude like something to kick off side b on the vinyl and then all of a sudden it starts opening up into blast but not immediately with heavy guitars yeah right you get clean tremolos and clean atonal riffs and such and then it just flat out explodes and this is where we started hearing synths more prominently in the background it, it's kind of like uh, the death metal willy wonka boat ride yeah, except, you know, it like really jumps head first in that whole cutting off the chicken head part. Mm. There is a ghost choir in The Flowers of Sadism, too. That's where I first thought I heard it, but I wasn't 100%. The atmosphere overall, and it it's in there. Like, you can hear it. I got reminded a lot of just portal atmosphere. Like, it's very just creepy, and you're not really sure what's happening at all times, but there's some sort of disturbing sound in the background. I got a lot of, like, uh, Defeated Sanity... An all noth rock, um, stuff like that. Like, I mean, very blast driven, but also dense. Yeah. Like, this album is like inescapable sonic torment. Pummeling, pummeling. It's like walking into a swarm of locusts and having the flesh ripped off your body, albeit kind of slowly. I don't know how long it would take a swarm of locusts to peel the flesh off your body, but. Mm. It would probably suck the entire time. Well, if they're listening to this, it would be fast and you wouldn't feel a damn thing. Yeah, they'd be moving at the pace of the drummer. So, yeah, no, I'll, I'll be like just a fine yeah. blood mist in moments. Yeah. Now, while most of this is just unbridled, violent, hateful chaos, yum, yum. there are some like interesting hooks on here. Like every now and then there are like Middle Eastern flourishes that show up, like uh, weaponized loss. Uh, the isolating lie of learning from another, and uh, the last track, He Will Fight Savagely. He did. He did. he did. And by he, I assume you mean the devil. Yeah, and he won. Those, I think, added a lot, like, you know, kind of reminded me a little bit of, like, you know, 
Nile, maybe Melakesh. And there's also occasionally like just good groovy breakdowns with a solid riff behind it. A lot of this, it kind of turns in this distant wall and it can be kind of hard to make out riffs. Like I would say like this almost kind of runs like a cattle decapitation album, except minus the fact that cattle decapitation will have very clear riffs and hooks. Yeah, yeah there's clear riffs, yes. Yeah. This is more about just the unsettling atmosphere and just violence. Like, this is yeah. the most angry, hateful thing I have listened to this year. And I know it's just January, <laughs> but I'm not entirely sure the rest of the year is going to supply something quite to this level. Like, I, I could be wrong. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I've i got kind of a, you know, look forward. If you get on Metal Archive, if anybody does it, you get on Metal Archives and you look ahead, I don't know that anything, at least for the, the first quarter of the year here, is going to be quite as intense as this. Like, even saying the word intense doesn't describe it. It's like that scene in A Clockwork Orange where his eyes are held open and he's watching a whole bunch of crazy shit. It's like that. You just, you can't look away. Except in that there was Beethoven. There's no yeah. Beethoven on this. No, no, Beethoven was not invited. You. But there is a neoclassical lead, if you want to call it that, in Shame and Its Afterbirth. Honestly, I got those vibes pretty hardcore. Dude, the lead work on here, I think, is quite exceptional and, and quite a lot of variety. It's just when it comes down to the, the riff work, it, it's kind of hard to make out. It's a very immersive album. Like, yeah. you can kind of get lost in, and I mean, even their live show, like, it's just, you, you focus on the rage coming out of the speakers at you. But it's interesting you bring up uh, Clockwork Orange because I, I felt like it was kind of like, held hostage by this yep. album like it was just beating me down in a chair in a like storage unit someplace and it's like no you will like this at least you know until the album ends and if you don't well hey who knows you might be alive i will tell them where the damn missiles are <laughs> <laughs> i will give this band credit for being creatively brutal yeah. like this doesn't run like your standard brutal death metal band like, it's not just chugs and, you know, pig growls. In fact, I think there's a lot of vocal dynamics on here, like, ranging from just bellowed roars and, you know, uh, desperate screams. Like, there's a lot of agony <laughs> behind this vocal. Yep. Yep. Oh, my God. But with the caustic atmosphere they create, plus the just unrelenting brutality, it's hard for this to be memorable in a song-to-song -song basis. There's just no songs. As an album... Yeah, no, I, it's a memorable experience because I doubt you will hear anything quite this vicious this year. Again, I could be wrong, but I, I feel like... I hope not. I Yeah, no, I, I mean, <laughs> this, this is this is just an absolutely dark, brooding, insane listen, but buried beneath all of the just constant din of dissonance and insanity, there is some absolutely insanely good musicianship on here. Yes, that I cannot deny. I don't think many people in the world can do this with this kind of precision and intensity the whole way through. Even in the instrumental track, which only lets up on you briefly, it still holds your attention because you know something fucking crazy is coming, and it's just a non-stop barrage. Overall, I'm going to give this four stars. I really dug it. I really like unhinged music like this. Like, I remember getting into bands like Beneath the Massacre when I was younger and finding that sort of insanity to just kind of draw me in because I didn't understand it. I like how wacky it sounds. I like how unhinged it sounds. And when it gets heavy, it gets fucking heavy. To the uneducated music listener, this is probably going to be a little insane. Probably a little bit uh, above where you want to be, but I would recommend checking it out anyway. It's a good time. It's a... Uh, Insane time, you might need therapy afterwards, but what's life if you can't enjoy it to its fullest extent? This would probably be that. In the end, if you like bands like Defeated Sanity and Beneath the Massacre and Origin, like Early Origin, Early Cryptopsy, which was insane, um, you're probably really going to dig this. I would recommend checking it out. I have no idea what the fuck just happened to me. Um, This record is not for me. It's insane. It's violent. I. It wasn't fun. It was, I'm a riff guy. There, there just wasn't enough big riffs to grab onto. Maybe there were, and I just missed it. I don't know if I want to listen to it again to, to, to absorb it. Um, maybe. The next time I'm real, real angry, I'll put this in, and we'll see what happens. But don't let this rating affect it. Two and a half? 
and they're talented. It's not easy to sound like this, but I don't want that in my ears right now. It's scary. There's demons, spiders in there. You might really like this if you like um, belt sanders to your taints <laughs> and uh, Velcro and just that underside of your, never mind. Um, <laughs> check it out if you want blood froth. I'm gonna go with a three and a half. Uh, I think this is solid for what it is. Uh, it, it sounds like the soundtrack to a saturation bombing over an entire town. And I swear you could probably hear some of the screams of the people kind of in the background. Yeah. This kind of like, kind of hits my level in terms of like there being too much distance. I'm also kind of a riff guy. Dissonance, I like as like an accent, like a seasoning. This feels like they poured the whole seasoning on top of like, you know, a big piece of meat, but it's clearly too much. The cap came off. Yeah, like, uh, damn it. Well, it's super salty now. Like you go to put Creole on your french fries and then you accidentally open up the wrong side where the spoon goes in. You're like, oh my God. Oops, all berries. <laughs> <laughs> it's oops, all distance. But I mean, overall, like, in terms of like one of the most intense listens I've had so far this year, this is it. Like nothing else has really come close. Sorry to other bands I reviewed. I'm sure you did your best. Mm -hmm. This band is just on some other level or bath salts. Mm -hmm. You lost. Uh, <laughs> it is vicious. Like it is unrelenting. It pretty much just grabs a hold of you and well, it squeezes you, but also like throws you around like Hulk through Loki at the end of Adventures. Like it's just one beating after the other. There is no niceties at all on here. Like this is one of the most brutal things I think I will listen to this year. And props to Dave Otero for being able to mix this. <laughs> like, man, it is just so wall to wall, noisy and twisted and dark. Uh, yeah, this this is absolutely intense. If you're a big fan of, again, a Null Nothrock, uh, defeated sanity, immolation, albeit yeah. like sped up like five times. It's like playing a cassette tape and you hold down the the record button, but not quite all the way, and it speeds the cassette up to like three or four times. Yeah. Yeah. Or uh, like even like brutal truth, uh, with even more dissonance and hate. Yeah, this is just pure musical hate and destruction and. Uh, yeah, they, they nailed that. If that was what they were going oh. for, they knocked it out of the park and had probably given at least Rin PTSD. Yeah, probably. And for the love of God, don't make love while listening to this album. <laughs> You're going to destroy someone's pelvis. Oh, huh. pelvis pudding <laughs> and frothy blood. I don't know if that would be possible. I don't know. I'm not going to try it. No, I don't. I'm not. Don't, 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 do that. That. don't drive while don't, listening to this. Operate heavy machinery. Yeah, don't don't Don't, don't, sh don't drive. Fly a plane. Yep. Don't do a lot of things, but definitely do listen to this record. So, if you enjoyed this review, give it a Ooh. thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe, because we do stuff like this all, all the, the time. time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link down below, thrallsmetal.com. Our Patreon link is there. It is also on our channel, down in the right-hand corner. But, if you would like to get some Thralls Metal merch, Thrallsmetal.com is where you find it. We have new shirts, we have old shirts at a discounted price, provided we have your size. And we also have hats there, so if you're looking for any of that stuff, click the link down below. Tons of stuff going on, Thralls of Metal, album reviews, we got discography rankings, Black Diamond Murder is coming, Meshuggah's coming after that. What's John Jamming is returning, Nick's got his collection updates, because as you know, Nick buys CDs from time to time here. Really. Always something going on at Thralls of Metal, and really it's all because of you guys. We couldn't do it without you, to be honest. Uh, I don't know if I would want to do it without you guys. We've been at this five years now, which is insane, and you guys just keep showing up. We appreciate your support and the fact that you uh, really like this channel. We're confused by that. We, we are, because we, we've always said you could do a lot better, but we're glad that you don't. All sorts of things that are obviously more enthralling, <laughs> then thralls of metal. You are fired. Whatever. You are, I don't give a fuck. But yeah, thank you very much, all of you. Nick, thank the people. Yeah, you guys absolutely rule. And again, tons of stuff coming your way. So one more big thank you because you guys are awesome. Thank you. And we will catch you later.